G'day all, welcome back to Dad vs. Son, and we're going to the first turn of the historical scenario of Utah Springs. Righto, so uh, following the sequence of play, uh, there's no initiative segment this time as the Americans have the initiative for the first turn. So we go to the movement phase. Now, uh, there are no reinforcements for either side, so we forget about that as we're starting. There are no disrupted or shattered or pinned units. So it's straight into movement. So what I'm going to do is just quickly pause it there, uh, do the American movement, and then we'll come straight back. Won't be long. Rightio. So I've finished up the American move, and I've, uh, I've brought Hampton with the Palmetto horse and the Palmetto foot up into the forest up here to try and block off March Banks and his people to start with. Washington's Dragoons are coming up in support along with Kirkwood and Lee's Legion of Foot. We've got the Maryland Brigade here with Pick and Sumter uh, Militia along with Brown's Artillery. Uh, so a stack of six. We have Green here with the Virginia Brigade the North Carolina Brigade and um, Gaines Artillery for a stack of six. We've got the North Carolina Militia along with the South Carolina Militia Rifles coming up in support. Swamp Fox in the swamp where he enjoys himself and Lee's Legion of Horse coming down and around to try and get up into this area. So that's that. The rally phase, there's nothing to happen there. Defensive artillery phase, and we have the British Light Artillery here, which is a two-strength unit, has a range of four. Has line of sight to this stack here and this stack here, and that's it. If it fires into here, then it's going to have a minus one uh, firing into forest or light forest. So it's going to fire up here and it's going to try and take out Brown's artillery because it gets a plus one for that. So two strength unit at range three is a six. It gets a plus one, so it needs a five to hit. Righto. Oh, sorry. The two strength unit at hexes two to three is an eight, so it needs a seven to hit and gets a five and misses. Okay, defensive artillery is complete. Rifle fire phase, we have the British rifle unit up here, nobody adjacent. American rifle unit down here, nobody adjacent. Close combat phase, again, nobody adjacent. So we go on to the second player turn. And it's now the British turn, uh, again, no reinforcements, no disrupted, shattered or pinned units. So it's their movement phase. So again, I'll just quickly pause this and do their movement and then we can come on back. Rightio, so back again. So what I've done is I've moved the uh, Sheridan's rifle forward to bring Hampton and his people under fire. Uh, Major Marchbanks has come forward with the light infantry and joined up with the Irish buffs to... Uh, do close combat with them. The three loyalist units along with the light artillery have moved into the light forest here, giving them a stack of six, uh, helping to protect the road through. Stuart has come forward uh, with the Grenadiers 63rd and 64th foot to have a go at the militia here. And Coffin has come forward with the Charleston horse and the 96th district to have a go at Swamp Fox, leaving Lee's Legion free down here at the moment. But if they can knock these back, then Coffin and uh, 
the um, Charleston horse can also come back and have a go at them. So that's where we are. Rally phase, nothing to happen there. Defensive artillery. So we now have uh, the American artillery phase. Excuse fat fingers. We have gains here. We have brown here. Again, these are uh, one strength units. They have a range of three. And the only units that are in line of sight are these units here. So Brown's artillery is going to fire at the light artillery. It's a range of three, which is a nine to hit. They're firing into uh, forest, so that makes it a ten to hit, but it's artillery, which brings it back down to a nine to hit. So, yeah, not very likely, but uh, worthwhile, since that's all they can shoot at. And here we go. We need a nine for Brown. And we get a two. And then we have the same for gains, needing a nine. And we get a one. So not much happening there at all. Right. The next thing to occur is the rifle fire phase. And we have the American rifle, the South Carolina militia rifle that can fire, and we also have Sheridan's rifle that can fire. We'll do, uh, this is simultaneous, but seeing as they're firing at different people, it doesn't really matter. So we'll do Sheridan's first. So he's firing into here, um, and he's going to fire at the Palmento Fort Singers. That is the best unit there, and try and get some in there so again it's a one strength unit firing adjacent which is a seven uh, but firing into forest makes it an eight but using his first fire makes it a seven again so a seven for the british to hit the palmetto foot and get a four and miss and then we have the british uh, sorry, the Americans firing, and they will fire who will they fire at? I'd really like to get rid of the Grenadiers with their plus two morale, but the strongest unit is the 64th, so we're going to fire at the 64th. Again, we're adjacent for a seven, into trees for an eight, first fire back to a seven. Right, oh, seven to hit. Let's see if we can get the 64th foot. And we get a five, and nothing happens there either. So we've done defensive artillery, we've done the rifle fire, we're into close combat. And effectively, we have one close combat here, one close combat here. And one up here. So again, we're going to start at the top, work our way down. So we have march banks here with the light infantry and the buffs. The light infantry will be the lead unit. Skinner's rifles are not playing. And the lead unit here will be the Parmento horse. So looking at it, we have six strength against three strengths, so two to one. Uh, for the attacker benefits, the morale of the attacking unit is a plus two for the light infantry. Remembering both sides are at high morale and there is no die roll modifier for their morale at the moment. So we have a plus two for the light infantry and a plus one for march banks is plus three. Um, And I think that is it. Right. Defender benefits. Uh, the Palmetto horse has a zero morale and we get a plus one for Hampton. So that's a minus one. Uh, and I think that is about it as well. So we're down to a two to one plus two 
for this attack, and then looking at tactics. The British are engaging with a leader. The opponent has a leader. Is flank possible? And yes, these British units could flank to here. Is withdrawal plausible? And again, they can go east, they can go southeast, northeast, they're fine. So withdrawal plausible. Table nine for them is a die eight roll. They get an eight, which is refuse flank. And then for the American forces, again, they're engaged with the leader. Opponent has a leader. Flank is possible down to here again. Uh, withdrawal is plausible. They can go to the west or the southwest. So again, table nine for a die eight. And we get a four, which is skirmish. So we have refuse flank against skirmish. That's a zero modifier. So it's a two to one plus two for the attack for the British. And they get a one plus two is three at two to one is pinned. OK, so we get pin marker for the British forces. And we have a pinned marker for the American forces. So that came out uh, a lot better than the British, uh, the Americans were expecting. Okay, the next attack is going to be Coffin down here on Swamp Fox. So what we have is two, four against two, so two to one again. Lead unit being Swamp Fox and the Charleston Horse. So. For the attacker, we have a plus one for the Charleston horse. Morale plus one for Coffin is a plus two. Uh, uh, da -da -da -da. And that is that. For the defender, we have a plus one for Swamp Fox. So that's a minus one for his morale. Uh, he doesn't have leadership for that. All attacking units are militia. No, they're not. Uh, but Swamp Fox is defending in a swamp is another minus one. So we're down to two to one straight with no modifier. Looking at leadership, uh, the British are engaged with the leader. The opponent, Swamp Fox, is a demi-leader. So he's counted as that. So he is, an opponent has a leader, is flank possible? And the Charleston horse can come into here. So flank is possible, the lead unit. So again, withdraw plausible. And of course, the Charleston horse can go back to the east or northeast. So gain table nine for a die eight. And they get a one, which is withdraw. Then Swamp Fox, again, he's a leader. The opponent has a leader. Flank possible. And Swampy can come into here to flank. Withdraw plausible. And he can withdraw down to the north, uh, sorry, the southwest. So again, table nine for a die eight. And he gets a two, which is stand fast. So we have a withdraw to a stand fast is a no combat. Righto. But seeing as it's a no combat and the attackers were, were withdrawing, then they all have to withdraw one hex. And they're going to withdraw up to here. And the reason for withdrawing up to here rather than down into here is so that we have a blocking force now to stop green coming through if possible. Righto, last attack is Stuart's headquarters with the Grenadiers 63rd and 64th foot. So they have six and the Grenadiers will be the lead unit. Um, and they're going to be going against the militia rifle and the North Carolina militia for three. So we have six to three, which is a two to one. Do I want to do that? I have to. Yep. Okay, so we have a two to one. 
The Grenadiers pick up a plus two uh, for their attack, uh, for their morale, uh, but nothing for Stuart, so we have a plus two. Uh, def any defending unit is a rifle, that's another plus one. Uh, all defending our militia is another plus one. And that's that. Defender benefits. Um, we have the, the militia rifles on a zero, so nothing there. Uh, and this is going to hurt. So, no, that's it. So we have a two to one plus four at the moment. And then we look again at leadership. So the British are engaging with the leader. The opponent has no leader. Is flank possible? And the Grenadiers cannot flank. Uh, in fact, they could, because they can flank into here because there is no zone of control into the forest. So flank is possible. Is withdrawal plausible? And they can withdraw up to here. So they're good. So it's a table five for them, which is a D10. And they get a six, which is attack on echelon. And then for the Americans engaging without a leader, is withdrawal plausible? And it is. They can go west, southwest, northwest. So it's table one, which is a D8 for them. And they get a one, which is withdraw. So we have attack on echelon against a withdraw is another plus one. So they're up to plus five at two to one. This is going to be nasty. Okay, here we go. And they get a three plus five is an eight at two to one is a disruption. Okay, sorry about that bumping stuff around. So the militia rifle must retire three. One, two, three. And becomes disrupted. And the North Carolina militia must do a morale check. So their morale is a minus one. Uh, they need a five or better, so they need to roll a six or better. They get a zero, so they must retreat one. And they go back. In which case now, the Grenadiers must advance, but the whole block is going to advance. So 64th will come forward, 63rd will come forward. Is that what I want to do? Yes, and the Grenadiers will come forward with Stuart. Okay. Wipe out my little marks. So we've done that. Uh, there's no momentum for gain. So resolve, momentum, close combat results. Okay, so what we have is the morale adjustment and for a disruption it is a minus one to the americans which brings them down to 13 morale the same as the british and that is that so we've finished turn one i think we'll go straight on to turn two and the first thing that's going to happen is the initiative roll so the americans oh sorry we haven't had yeah, the initiative roll. Um, so both sides have a plus one to their initiative, but the Americans would really like the initiative this time, I believe. So they're going to use their momentum. So they're now on a plus three against a plus one for the Brits. Here we go. And we get a nine, which is a 10 for the British, and a one plus three is a four. So the British are up first, and that hurt the Americans big time. So again, uh, we're into the movement phase. There are no uh, reinforcements. Uh, the British have no disrupted units, no shattered units. They do have these pinned units, um, 
but they're quite happy to leave them there. Um, if they move them away, then that would cost them one army morale point, and they don't want to do that. So it's going to be strategic movement. So I'm just going to pause it there quickly, have a look and see what we want to do. Righto. So these British units up here have not moved. So we've still got March Banks with the buffs and the light and the rifle up there against Hampton and his mob. Um, Delancey with his stack and the uh, light artillery have simply moved to the rear um, to get out of range of the artillery fire here. Uh, Coffin, along with the Charleston horse and the 96th, have moved to the rear, again blocking the encampment off from the Americans. And Stuart has simply moved over into the light forest to have a go at the North Carolina militia. So that's it. Rally phase for the British, no need. Defensive artillery fire. The only artillery we have here has no line of sight up here, down here, out of range. This artillery here, again, out of range. And I don't think they have a line of sight there, but they might. They do have line of sight, but again, it's a one, two, three. Um, they're firing at, which is a nine, uh, plus the woods is a ten, so they can't fire anyway. So that's that. Uh, rifle fire phase. The uh, American rifle is back here, can't do anything. British rifle, again, is going to fire at the Palmetto horse. So it's firing for a... 7, minus 1, uh, plus 1, so a 7 again to hit, and rolls a 3 and misses, and then we go into the close combat phase. So again, we'll start up here with March Banks, so we have a 6, 2, 3, again the rifle is not playing, so we have a 2 to 1. Uh, the Light infantry again is the lead, so that's a plus two, plus one for March Banks is a plus three. Parmento horse is a zero for its morale, so they pick up one for Hampton, which is a plus one, bringing it down to plus two. Uh, defenders, ba -da -da -da. and that is that. Um, So that's it again, two to one at plus two. And again, going back to the tactics, uh, the British are engaged with the leader. The opponent has a leader. Flank is possible. So, and withdraw is plausible. So table nine again for a die eight. And they get a two, which is stand fast. And then the Americans are exactly the same. And get a four, which is skirmish. So we have a stand fast against a skirmish is a plus one. So we're at two to one plus three this time. Right, oh, let's see what damage they do. And they get a two. Plus three is five. At two to one is a retreat. So the Parmento horse must retreat one. It'll come back to here. Uh, Palmetto foot does a um, blah blah blah. Palmento foot does a morale check, so they're at zero. But they pick up a one for Hampton, so they need a four or better. They get a zero, so they must retreat as well. And Hampton goes back with them. At which stage the light infantry must advance. The buffs go in. The light infantry go in and March Banks goes in. Which leaves us with our last one here, which is Stuart with the Grenadiers 63rd and 64th foot. So we have 6 to 2 again. So it's 3 to 1 this time. Uh, the Grenadiers are the lead unit, so that's a plus 2. Uh, nothing for Stuart. 
defending unit is militia, so that's a plus one. Defender is not surrounded. Okay, defender benefit there <laughs> at a minus one morale, so that's another plus one to the British. Um, and that is it. So we're at three to one plus four, and again we go to tactics. So the British are engaged with a leader. The opponent has no leader. Uh, flank is possible. Uh, withdraw is plausible. They can withdraw here or here. So it's table five for them, which is a die 10. And they get an eight, which is a frontal assault. And then for the defender, Engaging without a leader, withdraw is plausible, so therefore it's table one, a die eight. And they get a seven, which is skirmish. So we have a frontal assault against a skirmish, is a plus two again. So we're at three to one plus six. Oh, I feel the pain already. Okay, and they roll a three, which becomes a nine at three to one. Three to one for a nine is one step loss and a leader casualty, but there's no leader there. So step loss for the North Carolina militia and they are eliminated. Okay, momentum decision, there's nothing. Uh, close combat results is done. Army morale adjustments. A one step loss is a plus one minus one. So the British go up to 14 army morale, the Americans come down to 12, and then we have advance after combat. And again, the Grenadiers must advance, so everybody is going to advance. 64th foot goes in, 63rd foot, Grenadiers and Stuart. Right, and that is that. Then we go on to the American side of things. Yay! For the Americans, okay. So again, uh, movement phase, uh, no reinforcements. Disrupted units may move one hex. And I think the disrupted rifle will move back one. Um, there are no shattered or pinned units this time. So we're looking at movement. So again, I'm just going to pause it there, have a look at the American movement and go from there. Won't be long. Righto. So what's happened is Lee's Legion of Horse have come down across the bridge, across the creek, into the light uh, woods down here and aren't doing anything. Swamp Fox has come back over into here and with the Maryland Brigade and his stack and Green and his stack coming down, Stuart and his people are now surrounded. I've withdrawn Hampton back into the light woods here and the other two, uh, Lee's Legion of Foot and Kirkwood, have joined him. So they now have a stack of five. And Washington's Dragoons are in support here on the road. So that's that. Okay, so the next thing to do is a rally phase. So we need to do a morale check for the South Carolina Rifles. Uh, they're currently on a zero, so they need a five or better to rally and get a five and they rally yay in which case we get a uh, one on the uh, army morale so the americans go back up to 13. righto defensive artillery fire uh, we have the artillery here has a range of four one two three four nobody's in range nothing is happening uh, the rifle fire phase we have the British up here, the Americans down here, nobody adjacent, so no rifle, rifle fire. So close combat, and this is what we have here. So we have the British with their six, Grenadiers as the lead unit. We have Green here, um, and we'll just use the Maryland Brigade as the lead unit, because this would be a one and a one. This gives a two anyway, so... Maryland Brigade is the lead unit. So we have three, six, nine, 12, 14 to six, which is a two to one. 
Uh, again, Maryland Brigade is a plus two. Um, doo -doo -doo. Defender is surrounded, makes it a plus three. Defender benefits. We have the Grenadiers at plus two, so that's a minus two. Um, and that is it. So we're at a two to one plus one for the attack. Okay, looking at the tactics. Uh, again, the Americans are engaged with a leader. Do, 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 do. Yep, engage with a leader. The opponent has a leader. Is flank possible? And our Maryland could flank to here, so yes. Is withdrawal plausible? And all our troops can withdraw. So it's table nine, die eight. And we get a six, which is commit reserve. For the British, again, engaging with the leader. The opponent has a leader. Is flank possible? And it is not. Or is it? Yes, it is. They could flank to here. So flank is possible. Is withdrawal plausible? And it is not. So it's a table 10, which is a die 10. And they get a 7, which is turn flank. So we have commit reserve to turn flank is a plus one. So we're at two to one plus two for the American attack. Let's see if we can do some damage there. Okay. Two to one plus two. And we get a nine plus two is 11 at two to one. Is Captured, attacker's choice. Ooh. Captured, attacker's choice. Now, we could get the 64th. That's the highest value unit. And that would be make it easier to kill the rest off, even though the Grenadiers are at a plus two. So we're going to take the 64th, captured. Okay. So the rest of these units now have to do a morale check. Uh, let's see. AC. Uh, one cop. Da, 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 da. If the printed unit morale is plus two, also C1274. If a unit with a printed unit morale of plus two is captured while it's at full strength, the owning player must return a momentum chip to the pool. If he does not have one, the opposing player is entitled to take one. So the British don't have one. The Americans get to take one. Momentum chip. Okay. Then we do... Uh, the other friendly units must make a morale. If they pass, they retreat one hex, which they can't do. If they fail, they suffer a D and retreat three hexes. Okay, so they must retreat no matter what, and they have nowhere to retreat to. So there's no need to roll for the morale. Simple as that. So... The Grenadiers must retreat one hex, whether they pass their morale or not, and they cannot retreat anywhere, so are captured. The 63rd, again, cannot retreat anywhere and are captured, and Stuart cannot retreat anywhere and is captured. That was the bestest type of result we could have asked for. The lead unit was the Maryland Brigade. Um... So it will advance into there. Pickett Sumter will remain where he is. So that's that, and that stays there. Okay, so we've done that. 
Um, resolve close momentum decision we've had. Apply close combat result. Make army morale adjustments. Okay. So. Um, what we have then is we have the first up, the 64th captured. So capture unit, have unit captured is a plus one, minus one. So for the three units captured, um, da -dum -dum -da. again, what we have is the 63rd, which has a strength two, which is being captured. Oh, that's a printed morale is two. No. So, well, that's okay, because we had the printed morale for the Grenadiers, so that still holds true. And that's what we got the morale for, not a two-strength unit. Um, so, screwed that, fixed that, not a problem. So what we have is one, two, three units, four units, counting Stuart, have been captured. So that is a plus four for the Americans, but they can only go to 15, and a minus four for the British. One, two, three, four, and they come down to 10, which is fatigued. Then on top of that, a leader casualty. We look at the leader casualty summary. And for Stuart, again, it is a plus one, a minus one. So therefore, the British lose another um, point, and they are down to nine. Then we do the uh, momentum, gain momentum, and the Americans, due to getting an 11, grab another momentum and now have two, and then advance after combat, which we have done. My God, I wasn't expecting it to be that good, that's for sure. Okay, so at the end of the American turn, we have wiped out approximately a, a quarter of the uh, British forces, captured them, I should say, not wiped them out. And we have finished turn five. And when we come back, we'll go on to turn six which is the third turn in this scenario, uh, the noon turn. Yee, I thought, I didn't think uh, they'd be hit that hard, but um, yeah, that my tactical sense for the British was absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so apologies to the British, hats off to the Americans, and I will catch you for the next turn later. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.